Um, okay, let's see. I've got some library books today. I've got something from Amazon and a book review on other worlds. Um, and oh yeah, and my hair. I dyed it, what was it? Luscious raspberries. Uh, this is my granddaughter's, my oldest granddaughter's. Uh, we got this the other day. Her hair is red. Well, her natural hair is black, but she had a had a red dye on it. But you know, it was already fading, and she wanted something redder. So we got this. Uh, turns out it's uh, luscious raspberries, not red, and so it's kind of pink in a way, pinkish red. But uh, we use this. Uh, she's got it all over. And with her hair black, it didn't show as, as much as mine. And then I did hers. She did mine and just the uh, the top or the front part, which I really like it. I kind of wish I'd done it all over now. I've always wanted my hair blue, but uh, this was for her and she wanted red. So we got it. I might, uh, I, I will definitely do this again, either in this color or in blue or something. But uh, anyway, I really like it. So I finished the book Other Worlds, and uh, I mentioned it before. I forget who wrote it now. It was good. I would give it about a three and a half. Uh, it wasn't great. The premise was that uh, these well-known people from the past, Arthur Conan Doyle, Harry Houdini, um, a psychologist, um, different sleuths, uh, kind of Mythbusters kind of people uh, come together to go over these famous American uh, poltergeist uh, cases and uh, somebody will, will report or read all the facts of the case, what happened, uh, when, every, all the facts that are known about the case and then they each give their opinions uh, trying to solve it. You know, what really happened? Was it really paranormal? Who did what? Uh, the two cases in the book were the Bell Witch uh, case and um, the other one didn't, I don't think it had a specific title. It was uh, the Phelps Mansion which was in Connecticut I think. <coughs> and. Um, Anyway, it, it was interesting. I liked it. That's why I give it a three and a half. So, uh, let's see. Right now, I'm reading uh, The Monsters of Templeton with a fabulous cover. And I am really enjoying it. I was so glad to read something that I really, really like. After the last few books I've read, haven't been all that great. Uh, Other Worlds was good, but not great. Three and a half. And, uh, before that, I think I rated something a three, and then that horrible book, I don't think I gave it anything. I don't remember that, uh, what was it? Uh, the Pillow Friend. Yeah, that was not a good book. But uh, this one is really interesting. Uh, this young woman comes home from uh, uh, college research. She had been uh, doing ar with an archaeological group in Alaska and something happens so she comes home to Templeton which uh, is the town her mom lives in and all her ancestors lived in. They, In fact the ancestors founded the town and uh, it's a story on several, several levels of course what happened to her that made her suddenly leave Alaska and come home and um, then I guess you would say the main story, there's so many stories, there's layers of stories here, is uh, she's trying to research and find out who her father was. Her mother won't tell her, uh, but she gives her a clue. And really, in a way, it's kind of to give her something to do so she doesn't just sink into uh, depression uh, over what she's going through in her life right now, so, she, so her mother presents this to her, who's your father, to get her to get out and do something and do this research to find out who her father is. But uh, it, it's just really so much more than that. Some of her ancestors as ghosts uh, sort of um, 
have a role in the book and uh, the past and the present kind of mix as she's researching she's going back and reading uh, old letters uh, old documents um, and then her ancestors appear in the book to tell their stories to uh, or to shed light on different things so it, it's really a good book and I highly recommend it I haven't finished yet but I'm more than halfway through and uh, anyway I'll rate it when I'm through and discuss it but yeah it's a good one I'm glad I'm so glad I got this book after having a run of kind of mediocre ones <clears throat> and so I went to the library the other day and I forget where I heard of uh, or Charles DeLint was mentioned to me recently and I don't remember where if I read it somebody said something about it or what but anyway sounded like an author I know I would really like <coughs> excuse me and uh, the library here had only two of his books which was disappointed because it wasn't even the one I, I really wanted but uh, the first one is Traitor great cover and it says <coughs> excuse me Leonard Trader is a luthier a maker of guitars Johnny Devlin is chronically unemployed Leonard is solitary quiet responsible Johnny is a lady killer a drunk a charming loser when they inexplicably wake up in each other's bodies Johnny gleefully moves into Leonard's comfortable and stable existence leaving Leonard to pick up the pieces of a life he had no part in breaking. Penniless, friendless, homeless, Leonard begins a journey that will take him beyond the streets of the city to an other world of dreams and spirits where he must confront both the unscrupulous Johnny Devlin and his own deepest fears. So, anyway. Yeah, I think I'm really going to like this one. I can't wait to start it. And the other DeLint book, Waifs and Strays, is a collection of short stories. And uh, usually I don't read short story anthologies. I don't know. But sometimes I do. But anyway, since it was Charles DeLint, I decided. And also, look at that great cover. That is fabulous cover. Uh, it says, a master storyteller, Charles DeLint blends Celtic, or is it Celtic? I don't know. I've heard it both ways. Blends Celtic, Native American, and other cultures into a seamless mythology that resonates with magic and truth. So I'm really looking forward to reading that one too. And uh, so my granddaughter was with me and she just picked one book quickly and it's Angela Johnson's The First Part Last. So you can see it's got the Coretta Scott King Award right there. So I thought, well, you know, Coretta Scott King Award, it ought to be pretty good. But here on the back it says, Bobby's a classic urban teenager. He's restless, he's impulsive, but the thing that makes him different is this, he's going to be a father. His girlfriend, Nia, is pregnant and their lives are about to change forever. Instead of spending time with friends, They'll be spending time with doctors and next diapers. They have options, keeping the baby, adoption. They want to do the right thing. If only it was clear what the right thing was. So I thought, okay, that's like the TV show 16 and Pregnant or something. But uh, anyway, then I looked inside. Where? Right there. Reading level is... 4.7 that means fourth grade seventh month so I thought what you know the fourth grade a fourth grader is not really going to be interested in this subject matter so I mean it's insulting do they think that african-american teenagers who you know this book is aimed at are on a fourth grade le reading level you know how insulting oh, oh brother that's just wrong on so many levels. So, I don't know. She hasn't even read it yet. She's been gone uh, for a couple of days, and the book is here. <clears throat> so, I don't know if she'll read it or not. But, I mean, it's a young it's a young adult book, YA. So, that to me, that says teen. And, you know, the subject matter is teenagerish.
but a fourth grade reading level? I mean, how insulting. They, I don't know. Coretta Scott King Award needs to set its standards a little higher, I think, or something, or the writer, Angela Johnson, if she's going to write books on teenage subject matter, ought to make them, you know, on a teenage level, not a fourth grade level. My goodness. So, I don't know. But, as I said, I haven't read this yet, so, you know, I don't know. And Shabri hasn't read it either, so. Then, let's see. The only other thing I have, I think, is I got a book in from Amazon. It's one that I've seen talked about on YouTube quite a bit. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Okay, you've probably seen this around the internet. Look at that. Wonderful cover, and look, she is floating about a foot above the ground. And on the back cover, okay, really good. And uh, the inside of the book is kind of cool. And here's the chapters. There are Okay, I'm not used to this camera. There are pictures interspersed throughout of some of the children or whatever. There's pictures from this home. Um, oh, and that page is a letter. Where are picture. Okay. Everything's just a little bit odd. And here's like the start of chapter three. Each chapter has its own chapter page separate. Um, Okay, a mysterious island, an abandoned orphanage, a strange collection of very peculiar photographs. An unforgettable novel that mixes fiction and photography in a thrilling reading experience. As our story opens, a horrific family tragedy sets 16-year-old Jacob journeying to a remote island off the coast of Wales where he discovers the crumbling ruins of Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. Uh, spine, okay, I'm skipping some here. A spine-tingling fantasy illustrated with haunted, haunting vintage pho photography will delight adults, teens, and anyone who relishes an adventure in the shadows. Okay. It's by Ransom Riggs, I think, right? Yeah, Ransom Riggs. So, anyway, I'm looking forward to reading that. But I'll be reading the library books first so I can get them back. And uh, I've got quite a to-be-read list going. Okay, I think that's all I have for today. And thanks for watching.